New storms likely in the Pacific and Indian Oceans later this week. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 19th. Around the world right now we have a weakening tropical storm Nesat in the South China Sea, Haitang still alive to the northeast and a subtropical depression still active in the Mediterranean Sea to the southwest of Cyprus, although it's not likely to last much longer. Well let's take a look basin by basin, this is the Atlantic right now, day 141 of hurricane season and I'm delighted to say once again that there are no areas of interest to look at. So that's good news for all concerned in the Atlantic area and nothing expected in five days. The Eastern Pacific, we are looking at this high chance of development now off the coast of Mexico. 90% chance on day 158 of hurricane season is likely to take a track off the coast of Mexico and then landfall in a similar place to Orlean. Uh, we'll take a look at that a little bit more shortly. And in the Western Pacific, we have those two storms, of course. They sat rapidly weakening right now. A uh, area of interest now at 60%, hot on its heels. And another one further back now to the southeast of Guam at 20% that we could be looking at potential development as we enter next week. And in the Indian Ocean, we've now bumped it up to 70% for that other area of interest that we've been monitoring for weeks now, to be honest. Uh, looks like it's finally going to start developing fairly soon. Keep a close eye on that one. All interests along the coast of India and Bangladesh. Let's check some satellite imagery. This is the current view across the Atlantic right now. Dry air dominating the Caribbean Sea. Uh, and you can see that moisture over the Gulf of Mexico. Um, almost a tropical system there, but very uh, disorganized. And generally across the Atlantic, it is a picture of disorganized uh, events right now. And looking towards the uh, Eastern Pacific, we don't have GO-17 right now again, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see that disturbance there on the Pacific side looking a little bit better. That will eventually become this new system that will probably become a tropical storm and some models hinting that it could become a substantial hurricane. Here's some satellite imagery of the European region, Mediterranean, and you can see just off the coast of Cyprus there, convection has been firing a little bit more during the course of today, which is why we've kept it as a subtropical depression, although it looks like it is about to give up as we look at this imagery here. I'll let you decide whether that's going to happen or not. On the subject of giving up, this is they sat right now, which was a typhoon not long ago. But if you was to look at this image for the first time, you would suggest you would think that this storm had already bitten the dust. But it is still there, and 65 mile per hour winds due to wing lag. And this is the Philippine Sea. You can see on the left hand side there that new system. Well, not a new system, but uh, growing in chances, 60%. The Philippines have already gone and named it, actually. Um, and I've forgotten what the name was already. It was a long, it was a short one, sorry. Uh, I think it was Obet, uh, and that is in the Philippine Sea, and they expect it to become a tropical storm just as it passes the northern tip of Luzon. And that's a fair forecast. Here's another view of the Western Pacific, and you can see how they sat there degenerated in that 24-hour period. Uh, crazy how quickly that happened. And Haitang still uh, chugging along up there near the top of the screen, moving off towards the northeast. It will probably be gone as well in the next 24 hours by the time we come back and do our next tropical weather bulletin. Look around the other areas, here's the Indian Ocean, you might start to see that system beginning to get its uh, way in the Andaman Sea and what uh, becomes of it will eventually shift westwards into the Bay of Bengal and it will really start wrapping up we expect. And the Australian region looking like this, there's a lot of rainfall occurring right now in the eastern coast um, of Australia, the eastern states, Queensland and New South Wales, I believe in some areas nearing record totals actually. Um, and also a heavy front moving p uh, past Fiji and uh, descending down to the southeast there over Tonga and beyond. 
Well, let's take a look at those sea surface temperatures and late in the season here, a few areas of 30 degrees developing there in the eastern Pacific right ahead of this potential storm. The East Pack can often throw up late season surprises, so certainly don't rule out this storm. And in the Atlantic, still looking decent in the Caribbean, very warm there as well. And the loop current uh, extending there into the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf Stream out towards the Atlantic. The, the, the open waters are cooling, uh, but it's still very warm in those um, zones, the Caribbean and the Gulf, the enclosed zones there. The Indian Ocean is also still warming a little bit more as well. 30 degrees plus in some of those areas that might get a landfall next week, so keep watching that area very closely. South China Sea could do a little bit better, and that's probably half the reason why NASAT has degenerated so quickly. And also in the Philippine Sea there, still decent temperatures, 28 degrees or more, 30 degrees further south, uh, but still plenty good enough conditions for storm developments. Looks like the main Japanese islands are just about becoming out of reach now for any tropical cyclones. Looking at the anomalies, uh, still La Nina in, well in effect, the Gulf of Mexico above average, the Caribbean only just, and the rest of the Atlantic generally above average too, particularly in the subtropics, although that will matter less and less as time goes on. Western Pacific still generally slightly above average, and North Indian Ocean too. Look at the oceanic heat content, the Western Caribbean and the Central Caribbean as well, very decent conditions still prevailing there, entering the Gulf a little bit there as well. As we get to the end of October though, we really look towards Caribbean developments and we don't look towards strong hurricanes in the Gulf. Eastern Pacific, still a few little areas there, and the Western Pacific still quite strong in the Philippine Sea, as you would expect at this time of year as well. So let's take a look at the GFS computer models and take a look at what it's uh, throwing up. There is that storm that it's been uh, projecting for quite a while and all the models are on board now with this happening but the GFS wants it quite strong there, probably getting to category 3 status before weakening as it moves towards the uh, Isla Marias. Uh, off the coast of Mexico and there it is again watching it progress there pretty much following the close the coastline at a safe distance the green areas there that's tropical storm force winds will start to be felt along the coast there if that forecast comes true what happens to NASAT? Well, it dies off extremely quickly. Look at it there, it's gone by the time we get to 24 to 36 hours. There's that next system brushing north of the Philippines, a weak tropical storm there, and then it gets shafted down towards the southwest. It's a little bit stronger as it does that actually, uh, so that's interesting. It's in, all in the five day period, so we're looking at probably a tropical storm impact for the northern part of Luzon. Could deliver a lot of rain there as well. We'll look at the rain charts in a moment, um, and then it uh, really dives down towards the southwest. Indian Ocean, look out for this system that starts to form first in the Andaman Sea, but then you'll see the uh, rotation occur in the main part of the Bay of Bengal. You can already see it there. A massive system trying to get itself together, and off it goes. This is by the 23rd, 24th, and there it is approaching the Ganges River Delta region um, as a very large, not particularly powerful, uh, but still uh, getting up towards hurricane force conditions by the time we get to the end of that loop. And in the Australian region, the GFS has uh, thrown a curveball here. Goodness gracious. Um, this is what it's suggesting towards the end of the five day period. Well, there it is, a tropical storm that just about forms there, just off the coast of um, the southeastern part of Queensland, not far from Brisbane. Um, but that is only supported currently by the GFS model. And uh, it's got, it's the second run in a row that's developed it, so we'll see what happens as that progresses. Let's look at the rain amounts for the coast of Mexico. I know I mentioned the Philippines before, just to let you know that area is probably expecting around 250 millimeters, maybe higher than that um, from their tropical depression. But this is the Mexican region, and you can see there some very high amounts of rain if it tracks over the Islas Marias. Uh, but most of those heavy rainfall amounts will stay off the coast. Basically, if the storm moves over land anywhere, it will deliver very high rainfall amounts of over 500 millimeters. And there you can see 21 inches there. Uh, that is just over 500 millimeters. Uh, but generally on land at the moment, we're suggesting maybe six inches, which is a much more agreeable 150 millimeters for various parts of the coast of Mexico. Could still be locally dangerous with the potential for flooding and landslides. 
Let's check the longer range then. This is day five through 10. You can see what happens to that potential hurricane there, uh, moving inland. And then look at the Atlantic, a system here forming in the central Caribbean. You can see it there briefly becoming a tropical storm once and then twice in a landfall in Dominican Republic, almost going the wrong way, you could say. And then continuing off, we believe, towards the north. That is within the 10 day period. So it'll be interesting to see whether we have anything like that occurring. Uh, but certainly an interesting track forecast there and what happens to that second tropical storm there it is grazing the coast of Vietnam rather weak uh, let's see was that third one that we were promised um, I'm not sure we are able to see it anywhere here well I think there it is actually finally developing near the Philippines uh, caught me off guard there yeah you can quite clearly see at the beginning very broad system that really struggles to get itself together for a long time and then eventually uh, becomes that tropical storm right at the end of that 10 day period and maybe another small one forming near Guam there at the end for the Indian Ocean here is that system really wrapping up just before landfall looks like a category 1 landfall there so nothing like what we were looking at previously with category 3 or category 4 possible but that could still change this is still beyond five days um, and we can't rule out the potential this storm gets stronger certainly right now because it hasn't even formed yet so we can't really make big judgments on what its structure and size is going to be like just yet but that's the current GFS philosophy well that's all the serious stuff out of the way you can scan that barcode there and take a look at the Force 13 merch store where we have all kinds of products including full season and individual storm animations bespoke to your liking and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt a special that's still on right now and probably till the end of time in the silly range this is what we're looking at for the rest of that Atlantic systems duration there right through the end of October there it is moving north through the um, Turks and Caicos Islands and becoming a hurricane as it moves off towards the northeast rather quickly and then very quickly dissolves into an extratropical cyclone and gets sucked up and moves up towards the North Atlantic but certainly an interesting little storm there um, and its potential track forecast um, that would be rather interesting to see uh, of course the Dominican Republic would get a uh, possibly substantial impact from that one though Western Pacific what happens to that <coughs> third storm there it is really starting to blow up in size and actually steers away from the Philippines I know the previous model runs were showing that it would be a very powerful Philippine landfall but now it's taking it right the other way uh, becoming a rather intense typhoon as it rides the uh, front and moves off northeastwards um, and probably becomes a category four during that process as we enter the first days of November really powerful from the deep tropics right up there to the high latitudes massive size it moves into Alaska and look at the size and strength of that when it was reaching Alaska by the way extremely powerful uh, storm potentially well what happened on this day and it was a pretty incredible day back on October 19th 2005 when we were looking at the um, dreadful horrendous extremely powerful hurricane Wilma when it peaked on this day with a pressure of 882 millibars in the Western Caribbean and winds probably up to around 185 miles per hour that's Hurricane Wilma the most intense Atlantic hurricane on record being the previous record set by Gilbert still holds to this day elsewhere 16e was a nothing in the eastern pacific and Kirogi was about to die off in the western pacific well then this year the next name on the list is Lisa in the eastern pacific it's Roslyn and in the central pacific we are indeed still waiting for Hone until we're blue in the face and that's 78 storms to our year so far in the Western Pacific, next up now is Nalgi, and in the North Indian Ocean, we are indeed still waiting for Sitrang, but it seems to be coming slightly closer every day. Um, but still, so far, we don't have it yet. In the Southern Hemisphere, Darien is next up in the Australian region, Chaniso in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Hale in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again with more tomorrow night.